Hello friends and subscribers, a very warm welcome back to Daniel's Tech World here on YouTube brought to you by myself, Daniel Rosell, tech enthusiast I guess you could say. Uh, last year doing videos about uh, optical media, uh, M-Discs and Blu-rays, someone else cares about that stuff I think. Uh, maybe just the people commenting on my YouTube, that's like the world population or almost all the world population of people interested in optical. Uh, but uh, still actually remains something that I do care about and as I just commented, I haven't totally abandoned this YouTube channel. It was on my radar to do at least one video before year end. Forensic analysis of the optical media discs will be conducted soon. What I have been focusing on this year a lot uh, instead is large language models, prompt engineering, a little bit more uh, du jour, I would say, as topics go. Going to be sharing a few thoughts about prompt eng and working with LLMs basically over the course of the coming weeks. I'm going to try focus on very specific use cases like purchasing stuff and showing through that mechanism how you can use different strategies to get better, reliably better results from large language models because that's really what a lot of it is about, taking away as much as that randomness as you can from when you talk to an LLM, what kind of information are you gonna get back? What I wanted to talk about in today's video was just a little mechanism I developed and it's only that, it's a little mechanism slash hack for injecting context into large language models. And that is something that I'm going to be, unfortunately, talking a lot about during the prompt engineering videos. I say unfortunately because in an ideal world, this would not be part of the problem. And I think that really what's standing in the way between where large language models are today and where some of the absolutely incredible use cases could be is something called context. Large language models go through a training period during which they get exposed to lots and lots and lots of information and that informs their knowledge of the world. We've actually seen a good amount of progress in overcoming the problem there, which is that after the training data cutoff, the LLM is like someone who was locked in a cage in a desert. They don't know anything after that date, but by connecting an LLM to real-time data sources, it could be a financial API or a news API, we can actually get the best of both worlds. We can have a large language model that is much more useful as an information tool than a search engine. And we can actually say, hey, we know your knowledge stopped at the training day cutoff, but here is the information you're missing to round out that picture. Second part of knowledge for large language models is personal knowledge. If we have a large language model that knows all about what's going on in the world, that's great. But if it doesn't know anything about you, and every single time you talk to it, you have to say, my name is Daniel and I live in city, Jerusalem. That gets really annoying very, very quickly. And it means you have to type the same thing over and over again. Anyway, I don't want to get too far sidetracked, but that's why context really matters. There are little kind of systems out there. For instance, uh, ChatGBT has a little mechanism for preserving memory between chats. I call that thin memory because the amount of data stored there is small. And it's kind of hacking around the fundamental issues that are preventing a huge amount of personal data. Now, a lot of folks who are just kind of experimenting like me with LLMs have been thinking, what can we do about this? A system I've developed and that I've seen others do is developing your own little context repository. And that's what I'm coming to show in this video. No, it's not as sophisticated as RAG. It's not vectorized storage for those who are into this stuff, but it could be a pipeline into a vector database. But if you're just getting started and you want to think of a way to inject context, then even injecting little bits of context can actually have a big, big difference. Could be that you ask large language model for movie recommendations, right? And yeah, that's great. It knows the movies. We talked about the global context. What about the personal context, right? That is actually quite a small little data file that we could have saying, I love comedy. I hate old movies. I hate uh, black and white movies, right? Or, or whatever the case may be. We can actually codify that information in a JSON or a file. And that's really just all this little technique is. So let me just jump into my text editor, how I've been using this. Being the kind of uh, experimentary thinker that I am, I've been trying to just think of creative ways that we can actually speed up this context generation process. A couple of approaches I've tried. I've tried one, I actually got a large language model to interview me to develop context documents. It's basically role play. You ask the LLM to do the job of, of interviewing you and then wrapping up the responses into a, a document whenever it's got enough of them. That actually worked quite well. Um, another LLM assisted context generation technique I've used is asking the LLM to come up with a list of 500 different uh, context snippets like your job, your career aspirations, your medication list, 
and really just get it to ideate through topics and tell you what you need. Then fill in the blanks, paint by numbers and create them. But this is basically the skeleton of my, uh, my own context repo. I've developed one of these for uh, personal use and one for work just to keep everything kind of separate. Well, this one has a work folder, but uh, it's now in its own repository. And basically what's inside is if I go for like career, uh, this one I think is my public one, so it's a little bit kind of empty, more empty at least, is just really a bunch of markdown files containing different data that I want to drop in. All I'm gonna show you guys today is actually one individual file, which is called desktop specs. And I just wanna show how even one little context doc can actually be tremendously, tremendously useful. Now, one question is how should you store these uh, these little files? And I'll show you the, the big exciting file in a second. Two kind of trains of thought. One is using Markdown. It makes it easier to work with them. Another one is using JSON. And you could actually just use a program to convert your Markdown snippets into JSON, okay? Um, so some something, let me just show you guys it's a little bit easier on the eyes is the Markdown version of this document. So this is my desktop specs. And this, if I've got a lot of mileage out of any text file in my life, it's probably this one. This literally just notes the parameters of my desktop. It's not very exciting. I have 64 gigs of RAM. I have a AMD GPU, the RX 7700 apparently. And I run a uh, Linux distribution called OpenSUSE Tumbleweed with X11 with KDE. I've selected all the things I've noted here very, very deliberately. What you can do with this is actually very, very plentiful for context setting. You can come totally fresh to a new large language model that you've never interacted with before and tell it you need help with a program. Let's say, for example, a video editing program, right? There's a couple of things that might be different or context would be useful for there. One is the GPU. Secondly, the GPU is, is on which OS? Okay, down the line, which motherboard? The PSU, is there enough power? Um, et cetera, et cetera. So by simply having this little file in your sidebar and dropping it into a chat, you can instantly contextualize a LLM with minimal tokenization, right? There's not a lot of characters in this, but it's very information dense. So I use this one absolutely all the time for context setting, I might say. You can also use this, by the way, uh, specking out upgrades. I can just draw, in fact, let's just actually go and do a couple of quick prompts with this so you guys get the idea if it's not clear of how and why these things are actually quite helpful. Uh, there's two ways that you can uh, use it if it's in Markdown. Uh, you can just put it on the clipboard. So that's option one, uh, is using it just in a prompt, you know, pasting. That's probably the easiest one. But what I do, uh, practically speaking, day to day is I, an LLM, a chat library, a notepad editor, and then the context folder, sort of in a quad layout. I played around with different ones. And I'll just have these files ready to go all the time. And I'll just drop them in whenever I need that little bit of context. Um, so let's give an example. So this is the desktop specs. And it contains, as I said, basically the key parameters of not only my hardware, but my software. So the way I'd use it in a prompt is like this. Let's actually do one that is LLM related as we're talking about it. I could say, I'm looking for a great code generation LLM, which can generate Python and which will run comfortably on my hardware. Now this is where if I didn't have this, I'd be going down the whole rabbit hole of saying, I use Linux and I use LM Studio and my GPU is this and that, etc. And this is what we're saving time with. So you just literally drop in the markdown. I guess I could probably end the video here. You can just copy and paste from your context document or you can do it like this. And we'll just run this. And we will see now that this uh, large language model, I've no history saved in perplexity. So it's coming at it kind of from a context naive uh, standpoint as such. Uh, it's actually, it's contextualized based on my the context snippet I provided, by which I mean, it's gone for a um, type of model that is, you know, 7 billion parameters thereabout. It's relatively light. Now you can actually, if you're not sure, if you're, if you're skeptical of this approach, uh, you can ask for a follow-up question in the large language model saying, just making sure, you know, that this is based upon my hardware. Sometimes I will say, uh, you know, use the context that I provided as your context or base your con base your output upon this context. It's generally not necessary. It's probably gonna tell me uh, something like this. Well, this is a bit um, deeper. It's, it's kind of explicitly saying that it is 
going again. But you can see in the recommendation for Mistral, your 12 gigs of VRAM exceeds the minimum requirement of six gigs. So basically it's drawing all this context data from, again, as I said, this little document can, you get a lot of mileage out of it. I actually would rather keep my videos on the shorter side because I think they tend to be a bit too long. So rather than give you guys a bunch of explanations for what's probably a pretty simple point, I'm just gonna end it at the one, one, shot, one shot demos. But I will say this, this is just the concept. Uh, create a bunch of these. I have one for a career aspiration. I have one for resume. And when you're creating these, you might start from your resume as a CV. Think purely in terms of the data. So strip out any formatting elements. Uh, you could probably script this and have a bunch of little text data that you can have. I don't, again, say this is the most sophisticated context setting setting system in the world. This could just be the first step in a, in a pipeline to a vector database. But if you just want to get started like me and you want to use this across different large language models, this is quite an effective way of quickly setting context uh, when you're prompting LLMs and can really, really uh, dramatically improve the relevance and accuracy of the results you get. Thank you guys for watching today's video. If there's a topic about prompt engineering or whatever that you want me to talk about, happily do so until the next video. Thanks for watching.